Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be covering a variety of topics, including the recently released Bachmann DDA40X with sound. Now this is a great option for you guys that can't afford the Atherin DDA40X, but still would like a sound-equipped DDA40X. We'll also be talking about some viewer email, like why don't I do weathering, or why haven't I gotten into weathering yet, and also things like uh, the recent news from Union Pacific that they're going to be taking possibly taking 4014 from Pomona, California, a big boy steam locomotive, and making it part of the heritage fleet and part of the steam program. So we'll talk about all those things, but first let's go ahead and dive in to this review on the Bachmann DDA40X with sound. All right, so I just cut open the box and you're literally gonna be doing the unboxing here with me. See what this locomotive looks like, and we'll be kind of discovering how this locomotive operates, sounds, and looks together. As you see here, Here's the locomotive in a nice red and yellow box. DCC sound value locomotive. It's so across the bottom. See the new DCC sound value on board. The logo Bachman has. Obviously, this is HO scale. Let's look at some of the uh, details of this locomotive here. We got uh, sound per the prototype. We've got dual oval speakers, programming on the main, flashing safety beacon, 128 speed step control. It's NMRA compliant, has CAN motors, die cast chassis, the EasyMate Mark II magnetically operated knuckle couplers with the metal coil springs, and it's compatible with conventional DC power layouts as well. So that's kind of what the box says. Now let's go ahead and take it out of the box, put it on the layout, and see what we have. All right, now we're going to go ahead and take this out of the box, like I said. It's hard to get this whole box in the frame here. Oh, just to bear with me. Comes in a nice plastic sleeve here. And then we're going to take her out of the plastic sleeve. Got some thin plastic sheeting on top and on bottom to protect the locomotive. I'm getting scratched up from the plastic. Uh, pretty much standard in most uh, model railroad manufacturers packaging. One thing you will notice uh, right away is that the motor, unlike the Atherin DDA40X, you can see the motor in between here. Now the prototype, the real DDA40X, has had an actual walkway in the middle, as you see where my thumb is right there. But this is blocked by a motor because, um, you know, the cost effectiveness of Bachmann, they can't do everything. So other than that, overall detail. It's not bad, uh, you know, it's what you'd expect from Bachmann, the thicker handrails, um, the thicker grates, you know, grills, things like that. Um, there's no etched metal or anything, uh, no see-through walkways like you get on the DD, DDA40X from Atherin. If you guys want to see the Atherin DDA40X, check out my review on that. Um, you know, just basic details. Uh, but overall, not too bad. Um, as you can see below, here's where the two speakers are mounted and where the sound will come out of. Um, trucks and things have, you know, general detail, but not really super detail. Uh, you can see the gear right through there. Right there, you can see the gear popping up here. Um, so, I don't know. You can also see it on the other side, too. So, you can kind of see the gear. So, basic... Um, you know, basic details are down pat, but not extreme details. You know, no, no real window shades or anything like that going on here. Um, you've got uh, just basic, basic details. The printing is not exactly uh, perfect or crisp. Uh, it's kind of fat lettering, things like that. But you know, you get what you pay for. But what, like I said, I'm not going to bash this product because the pricing is so well. I mean. They just did a really good job for the price they, they got this in. So uh, let's go ahead and put it on the track and go over a few more details. All right, now speaking of price, the MSRP on this is $259 from Bachman. Now I'm going to tell you guys a little secret that most people already know, but Bachman, out of all the manufacturers, usually has the steepest discounts to dealers, which means it basically allows dealers to discount more off their item than any other manufacturer. So it is very common to see Bachman products discounted at anywhere between 25 to 40 percent if not more from dealers and they still are able to make a profit off of that. So 
With that said, the 259 MSRP, if you're paying 259, you're probably doing something wrong. Uh, matter of fact, just searching around the internet, I found a few websites where I've seen prices from uh, 140 to 160. If you're paying 140, especially if you're paying 140 shipped, you're probably doing pretty well. Uh, the only website I really saw these available at, um, other than on around on eBay, uh, the website's name is www.thefavoritespot.com, and somebody else, another YouTuber, actually told me about that, and they had them for about 140, and just calculating what it would cost to ship to me, it was a total of about 150 shipped. So that's pretty good, especially when you're talking about sound, even soundtrack sound. 150 is a good price. So let's go ahead and apply power to the track here and we'll see what this sounds like on startup. So what you have is the startup and it does seem to have a different sound as each different motor starts up, which is cool. There is one decoder in here versus two, like on the Atherm, uh, but there are two speakers. So now we're going to go ahead with the uh, DCC address of 003, which is what everything is default usually from all manufacturers, and listen to the bell and the sound. So overall the sound is not bad. If I were comparing it to the Atherin, I would have to say it's down a few notches and obviously it doesn't have that nice stereo sound. But the horn is the same as per the prototype. So it has a prototypical horn. The bell sounds fairly prototypical. So overall the accuracy is there in the sound. Uh, so that's pretty good for Bachman. Another thing I, I want to point out is that the front has this coupler that swings left or right all the way and it swings with the truck as you can see here and there's this big gap in the front uh, that's not prototypical but it also allows it to negotiate smaller curves I would still recommend about a 22 inch curve on this thing but they can handle 18 inch curves uh, from what I've seen so not too bad let's go ahead and take a look at the lighting here alright so I've killed the lights a little bit so you can see the details of the beacon light, the uh, headlight, and the uh, backlit number boards which this all has featured. So let's go ahead with the beacon. Beacon's pretty nice, looks decent, uh, it has a nice uh, sort of rotating look to it and it's nice and bright at its uh, peak and then it dolls back down. It does have the appearance that there is a little rotating light in there so I like that looks pretty nice. Let's go ahead and look at the number board, lit number boards. Now uh, the lit number boards, I can say that the, the left side number board is a little more lit than the right side number board. It may play a factor that the light is not centered or something, uh, but that's just this unit I've gotten here. Now for the headlight, headlights and incandescent bulb looks fairly nice, fairly prototypical, not much complaints there. Really, I can't complain at all about this locomotive because of the price. Like I said, you're looking at, the, if you go to thefavoritespot.com and purchase one there, you're looking at about $150 shipped, maybe a little more depending on where you live in the country. But if you, uh, you know, and even max at $259, that's a pretty good deal. So, I mean, for God's sakes, sound decoders installed, it's going to cost you more than $150 at most places. So I'm going to go ahead and silence the sound now so we can go ahead and finish up this review and look at some more details. So would I suggest the Bachman DDA40X? Absolutely, if you're on a budget and you can't swing the Atherin DDA40X with sound, I would definitely suggest this Bachman DDA40X because the price itself allows you to have that sound and have this locomotive in a representation. It may not be a perfectly accurate representation, but it's pretty good overall. So I appreciate the uh, efforts of Bachman on that. 
All right, guys, now let's go ahead and cover viewer mail and some other issues. All right, let's tackle viewer mail now, and there's just a few issues I want to talk about. The first one is that UP and UP Steam program is trying to acquire a big boy, which is the world's largest steam oper operating locomotive, largest steam locomotive. Uh, there's some questionable studies that say it's not, but whatever. It's the biggest one in the nation, I can tell you that. And they're trying to acquire this uh, down in Pomona, California, bring it to Cheyenne, Wyoming, where the steam shops are, and make it part of Union Pacific's steam program and part of their heritage fleet. Now, people have asked my opinion about this, and I'll tell you simply this. If they want to do it, go for it. Hopefully that doesn't mean that they're going to scrap any other locomotives to do it, um, which I haven't heard any news that they will. But I would just like to say that they, uh, if they can do it, go for it. I mean, as a rail fan, that's awesome to see something that big operating again. Now, it won't operate until 2019 or so if they stay on schedule and if they actually acquire it, which nothing's in stone yet. But if they do, it's cool. But that gives me plenty of time to acquire a big boy for my layout. Uh, about seven, six or seven years before I'm behind in my collection of everything Heritage Fleet and everything Steam Program. So, like I said, my opinion, go for it. Next issue is why do I not weather? People, uh, just a couple of people emailed me and asked me why I don't weather, why I don't do graffiti. And I'll tell you guys this. It is on my back burner. Absolute back, back, back burner. And I'll tell you why. My layout is not realistic enough to where I'm doing videos on it. And the only way you can tell it's not a model is if it was not graffitied. When I get to that point, which will be years, probably after I retire from the military, because I move all the time and I can't go into great detail on this layout because of the moves, because it's just going to be destroyed and I'm taking two steps forward and one step back every time I move, I've kept this layout fairly simple. And I've done that because of the moves and because of the mobility I need of the layout. Once I'm done moving and I can focus on realism of the layout and the scenery is done, and I'm making videos that look real except for the graffiti, then I'll tackle the graffiti issue. Now, in the meantime, I have a plan of, you know, one to two, maybe three years of possibly creating a train that's graffiti, you know, weathered locomotives, weathered and graffitied rolling stock. Just one train, you know, 20, 30 pieces of rolling stock, a couple locomotives, something like that in the meantime. Um, I like the fact that graffiti models what's really out there, but you guys would be surprised. Here in the Omaha area, there's not many graffiti trains. There's a piece here or there, but you won't find graffiti as much as you do in California, Southern California, the bigger cities, uh, as here. I've seen entire trains that are new or newer rolling stock that don't have weathering and don't have graffiti. Entire trains. It's a rare thing. I'm not saying it's majorly out there, but I have no problem running my stuff without graffiti because uh, it's just on the back burner. I mean, it is. Like I said, realism is my goal, and I'm, the graffiti would be the last step. The graffiti and weathering would be the last step in realism. So, with that said, you know, I've got tons of rolling stock that should be graffitied. I've got uh, BLMA reefers. Uh, somebody sent me an email saying, you know, Al Mayo was mentioning, mentioning that BLMA reefers needed to be all weathered and graffitied or else they weren't accurate. You know, I have no problem with that. Mine aren't on the layout right now. Uh, so I'll just get to it when I get to it. And it's not a huge priority for me. I also have a 40 hour a week job. I've also only been in model railroading three years, almost a year and two or three months of that I've spent deployed. So honestly, if you do the actual time that I've been in the United States and in model railroading, it's less than two years. It's like a year and 10 months. So I'm fairly new to this, regardless of what you guys see or how aggressively I move on my layout and things. So that brings me to my third point. I get a lot of emails tracking people trying to tell me what other YouTubers are doing, you know, or saying, or they think they're making a uh, claim against me. All I have to say about that is if they have enough time and enough effort that they're actually making claims about me on their eBay pages or on their pages or on their videos, then so be it, you know. They apparently envy me for some reason if they're doing that. Personally, I don't think that's happening. But if it is for some reason, you know, if they're trying to make these little digs that everybody's messaging me and telling me about, then uh, that just makes me more confident in what I'm doing because obviously they're, they're envying me for some reason because there's absolutely no reason to hate what I do or what I'm doing 
because I'm not an aggressive type person. I haven't went out there, you know, making complaints about people or or arguing about people or dissing people on their videos. So I'm a fairly passive figure. I'm, you know, I'm not an aggressive kind of guy as far as going to bother people. I get into conversations a lot and arguments a lot on forums sometimes, but I'm not the kind of guy that goes to hurt people's feelings and things. So if somebody's got a problem with me about that, then then so be it. It just makes me more confident in what I'm doing. And that brings me to my last point. There, the UP, UP Big Boy News was on a Facebook page called 3985-844-INFO. That's what it is. And it's a Facebook page, and there's some comments I made asking who the owner of the site was because there's complaints, uh, there's confusion. I wasn't the only one asking. There's several others asking if it's UP sanctioned or if it's an individual owner. This Facebook page, and it was just a question, I wasn't stirring any crap about it, but this Facebook page uh, got some other people that really got aggressive about it, and, you know, they came out and said they were part of UP, or the STEAM program. Well, I just talked to Mark Davis, the UP spokesperson, which uh, I talked to to get information. I've talked to him about my Cheyenne trip. You know, he gives me information, helps me out. Uh, he told me they are not part of UP, or he's not aware they're part of UP, so I was just clearing that up if anybody wanted to know. The 3985-844 info page is not part of UP. It's not a huge deal. They provide great information, but people ask the question, and I'm, I'm there to provide the answer for them if I can find it. And that page is really muddy in the water on whether they are or they aren't. And that just indicates to me more that they aren't. But hearing it from the horse's mouth, from a UP Union Pacific spokesperson, Saying that they're not, that clarifies that up. So for you guys that were wanting to know that, that follow me on my Facebook page, uh, that's the answer. Well, guys, that about wraps it up here. Wraps up the uh, review of the DDA40X from Bachman. I strongly suggest that if you can't afford the Atherin, this is a great option for you. We'll see you guys next time right here on my channel. Thanks.